Today on Ham Radio q and I'm going to talk about crossband repeating, what it is, and some of the pitfalls of using it, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. We may have seen it uh, in the user manual of your radio, or maybe on some type of advertisement, or read about it on an online forum. I'm talking about crossband repeating. But what is it? How does it work? And most importantly, how can you use it? Well, I'll talk about this somewhat misunderstood uh, radio feature. So let's dig in. Well, simply put, crossband repeating is an effective way to extend the range of your handheld radio. Uh, the crossband repeat function works by using a dual band mobile or base radio to retransmit on one frequency a signal received on another frequency band and vice versa. A common use of the crossband repeat is to extend your range of the handheld radio by using the higher power of your dual band mobile transceiver to hit a distant repeater. I think the best way to explain how this works is to use a practical example. Say you're volunteering for a public service event and you're stationed out in a remote location. Now you can re reach the event repeater uh, from the mobile radio in your vehicle, but your handheld radio just won't make it. That'd be okay, you know, if you're gonna be um, always at your car, but your tasks take you away from your mobile radio, so you either can't hear what the mobile radio ha um, is, is outputting, or you have to run back every time you want a transmission. With crossband repeat, you can pick a simplex channel on your radio and then every time the mobile hears the transmission from the repeater, it will retransmit on your simplex frequency. And then when you transmit on your simplex frequency, uh, the mobile trans in the, in the crossband mode will retransmit the communication onto the repeater's input frequency. A pretty slick feature, isn't it? So what do you need for a crossband repeater? Well, not every radio has this capability. Uh, so the first order of business is a dual band mobile radio with dual VFOs. Some examples of uh, radios with this capability are the Yaesu FTM400, a Kenwood's uh, TMV71A or TMD710, uh, uh, and also the ICOM's ID5100A. All of these are dual band, dual VFO transceivers. A transceiver that has the what's called the dual watch function is not going to work. Uh, what that means is the radio's got a single VFO, so but it's splitting itself between two different frequencies so it can watch uh, for traffic on that second frequency. That's not going to work for crossband repeating. You need two VFOs, uh, one for UHF and one for VHF, in order for the crossband to work. Now with crossband, uh, you're also going to need to pick a simplex channel on your radio so that every time your mobile hears a transmission from the repeater, uh, it will retransmit it on your simplex frequency. Uh, when, you re when you transmit on your simplex frequency, the mobile will then retransmit the communication onto the repeater frequency. So where do you pick as a simplex crossband frequency? Well, first off, you interfere uh, with others, and you don't want other traffic to interfere with you. So don't choose uh, the UHF calling channel or its variants. I think the safest is to use a frequency that's designated for crossband or auxiliary use. And you're going to find that frequency by going to your state or region's uh, repeater coordinating body and look at their band plan. In there, they'll list um, several uh, UHF uh, crossband or remote base frequencies that you can use for that purpose. For this video, I'm going to demonstrate the crossband function of the Yaesu FTM 400 XDR. So, uh, to do that, let's go into the ra uh, let's go into the car and take a look at the radio. The first step is to select the frequencies. Choose a VHF repeater frequency on the A band and your crossband uh, frequency on the B band. Uh, the frequencies can be programmed into the memory channels, or you can set them up on the radio's VFO. It really doesn't make a difference. Uh, make sure that the tone encode and decode is enabled on for both to reduce the chance of interference. Um, that might be that that could possibly open up your crossband links. And then your handheld radio will also need the UHF simplex frequency programmed into it. So to enable the crossband repeat, uh, turn the radio off. Next, uh, disconnect the microphone. The Yesu has a hot mic when it crossbands, so you're not going to want that mic connected to the radio. 
While holding down the GM, F, and display buttons, press the power button momentarily to power up the radio. Uh, when, when you see the screen, release the GM, F, and display buttons, and um, the display should indicate that your radio is now in the crossband repeat mode. To disable crossband repeat, turn the radio off, then repeat the process of holding down the GM, F, and display buttons while pressing the, the radio's power button. The display should no longer indicate that the radio is in the crossband repeat mode. Now that you're in the crossband repeat mode, you'll transmit on your simplex frequency as you normally do. KB9V. KB9 VBR. Now that you're in a crossband repeat mode, you'll transmit on your simplex frequency as you normally do. Uh, the crossband radio will retransmit onto the repeater's input frequency. When you lift up on the push to talk uh, button, the crossband radio will then transmit the repeater's output back to you via simplex. But all of this switching and retransmitting causes a bit of delay. So before you speak, uh, you will need, you'll need to wait about a second for all of the links to activate. When you are monitoring and wish to make a transmission, you also need to wait for the signal to completely drop on your UHF side before you transmit. You'll hear what I like to call the double kerchunk. First the repeater dropping, and then the UHF link drop. So don't be fast on the microphone button. Give plenty of time for all of the links to activate and deactivate before speaking. Now here's a couple of warnings about crossband repeating. First off, don't try to crossband two repeaters together. Uh, the squelch tail and hang time on those repeaters will cause an endless loop in, in the crossband, a lot in which will lock up both repeaters and your radio until you uh, physically disconnect the power of your transceiver. Second, Keep the power of your crossband transceiver at the lowest level necessary to maintain communications. Now, when you're in a crossband mode, you're running at a 100% duty cycle, and the constant use of crossband can cause your rig to get quite warm very fast. Uh, so keep the power low, uh, give it a rest when necessary, and um, if you're using the mobile rig in your car, you may also want to um, attach it to an external battery so you don't uh, wear down you know, your automobile's um, starter, starting battery. And finally, there's a couple of legal issues concerning crossband repeating. Uh, your crossband repeat transceiver is an auxiliary station and you're controlling it via a remote control. So first off, you're gonna need some method to disable the station if it fails. If you're near the radio, you know, such as you're using a crossband repeat from your car while you're, while you're roaming about, uh, you would be close enough that you could shut it off if need be. Or uh, the second option is to enable the timeout timer on the radio. This will kill transmissions if they exceed, say, three minutes in length. The second issue is that since you're unable to identify uh, the, trans the transmission on the UHF side yourself, its output of the repeater being sent to your handheld, uh, this could be considered an unidentified transmission. So to be completely uh, legal in that regard, you'll need some type of automatic identification process. Uh, the Kenwoods, the TMD710 uh, and V71A, both have that capability built into them, an automatic CW ID or on the UHF side, but unfortunately, other models of radios don't have this feature. Uh, so, but I'm not advocating that you break FCC rules, but um, history has shown that the FCC will turn, has often turned a blind eye to crossband repeat. So as long as you don't cause harmful interference, you know, it's really up to you how and when you wish to use the crossband feature. I'm sure if you keep the transmit power low and use it on an itinerant basis, you know, you're going to be just fine. So do you have questions about crossband repeat? What are your experiences using a crossband repeater? I'd love to hear them. Please leave a comment uh, in the video description below. I'll filter through them and keep that conversation going and maybe pick out the best ones for my next uh, Your Questions Answered video. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so um, you can do a few things for me. Number one, if you enjoy this video, give me that thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Uh, check out some of the recommended videos alongside here. And also, if you haven't already done so, press that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe and clicking the bell notification will inform you when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9V. Have a great day and 73.